Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Eddie Marcus, spokesman and advocate for basic human rights for all people. My motto is, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And what that basically means is that you, the people, every last one of you, enjoy in your body, on this earth, during these times, the best life that is humanly possible. Today I want to talk to you on the subject matter, if I were the devil. If I were the devil, I would be angry. I'd be angry because I know that everything that exists belongs to someone else. I would be upset because all of the things in the atmosphere, in the galaxies, on the earth, in the earth, everything belongs to someone else. Someone we give acknowledgement to as God. I would be jealous. Why would I be jealous? Because I would want to be God. I could do a better job than God. If I were the devil, I would own nothing but my will. And my will would be to get everything that God has control over. And as much as possible, take control. And the easiest thing to me to do would be to get control of people who have a will of their own. I would influence them in every way I possibly could to have them have their will to do my will. Now I understand that God would want peace and prosperity and joy for everybody. But I wouldn't care about what God wanted for everybody. I would want everything for myself. I would want the minds of people. I would want all the resources in the earth. Everything that human beings felt was essential for them to be complete, to fulfill, I would want it under my control. They'd have to come to me if I were the devil. Some of you might not like that word. Maybe I should say if I were Satan. I would want total control of all things. And since you, the people, have connection with all things, I would need to control you, to have you under my control. And how would I do that? I know that every human being wants to be prosperous. See, that's what God made you to be, to be prosperous. Everybody would want to be happy. God made you to be happy. Every one of you would want to be at peace. God made you to require and desire peace. But the only way you could get that peace, that joy, that prosperity would be through me. And I must condition your mind to believe that the only way you can get that is through me, but not knowing that you're getting it through me. I got to make you think that you're getting it on your own. Not God, but on your own. And for those of you who just want to believe in God anyway, I'd have to make you think you were getting it from God. But you'd only get it when you submit to my will. Now, how do I do that? Well, let's see. First of all, rather than have people work cooperatively together to enjoy all of the wonderful things that God has prepared, I would make you think that those wonderful things would come to you because you were Alpha male, 
You were dominant. The dog eat dog world with you the toughest. You can do it. You as an individual could do it. And then after that, you as a race could do it. And then after that, you as a nation could do it. Only you. But you got to be the baddest dog in town. Whether you're an individual, whether you are a community, whether you are a nation, you got to be the baddest dog in town. This is competition. And I'd have you competing against everyone, against everything, to make sure that you came out on top. But I wouldn't just have you doing it. I would have others doing it as well. Other individuals competing against you. Other communities competing against you. Other nations competing against you. Because now I have control. And you believe that competition is the way of life. Yes. And I would reward you. I would make sure that all of those efforts that you are making would produce fruits for me. Because in so doing, I would end up controlling everything. Because now I got your mind off the truth. You are blinded. You would listen to me. And I would reward you. Rather than cooperate, I would give you a substitute for God. And I would put God on it. I would call it money. I would say in God we trust. And with as much of this God as you can accumulate, you could do anything. You could have your homes and Fix your home up the way you want to. You can have automobiles. Hey, you can even have hmm, gyms, swimming pools, all in your yard. You can have a, lots of land. You can have planes. You can travel the world. You can have businesses where people came and worked to you, worked for you as you worked for me. Nothing would be denied you if you got enough of these in God we trust. Let's see if I got any in my pocket. I want you to know exactly what I'm talking about. Well, that's a receipt. Let me look here. Yep. Here we go. It's a small one, but it begins with this one. A one dollar bill. See? In God we trust. Enough of these, and you can do anything you want. So rather now than depending upon a God you can't see, you depend upon these boys. Yeah. And I will bless those who bless me the most. Those who turn their back on what is real just for themselves, whether it's an individual, a community, a race, or a nation. I would bless them so I can use them the most. I would make them millionaires. I would make them multimillionaires. I will make them billionaires because they have generated their efforts to glorify me, even though they didn't know it. But you could tell that it was me. Why? Because as I did that, on the other hand, I would have war, terrorism, crime, and violence evidenced all over the land because I am the God of you. And I got you acting the way I want you to act so it will create all of this negativeness. If you served God, the real God, you wouldn't have crime and violence, terrorism and war. That is the fruit of you serving me, me, Satan, me, the devil. If I were Satan, those of you who go to church, because I know you want to serve God, there's something inside of you that says there's a God, a good God. I know there's a good God. That's why I hate him so but I would allow you to go to church in buildings and worship that God. I'd have you singing songs thinking you're serving that God. I'd have you drumming across pulpits, shouting and spitting and working up emotions and make people think that you're serving God. I'd have you testify about how God, good God has been to you, but it's not half as good as those who don't even go to church. I'd have you kneeling on your knees praying to the God that does not answer your prayer when you should have matured in the truth. When you should have used what you have the way God designed for you to use it. 
that would answer all your prayers. But I'd have you kneeling. Lord, have mercy. I need this. I need that. But you won't get it until you get some of these. Or you change your way of thinking from me to the God way of thinking. Yes, that's what I do. And just to keep you in line so you don't get hungry and start seeking for a truth, I would allow you to share in my bounty. I'd let you take tithes and offerings. And I'd let you use that as you see fit. You can tell the people you're setting up food shelves. You're helping poverty in different lands. You can do that, but the poverty that exists, you have created. It is my way, my way of doing business. And so that will make you think you're doing good, make you think you're serving God. And all the time, you're serving me. And for those who God just touched and revealed his hand to, gave them the truth who were able to stand up in spite of it all and say they were going to be champions. They were going to be soldiers for the true God. I set you up so you wouldn't even listen to me. And if God blessed them in such a way that many of you who have failed by the wayside, who have been non-recipients of my blessings, wanted to listen to them, and follow them, I would kill them. I would cut off the head of that snake and leave you with hope. Jesse Jackson says, keep hope alive. That hope is going nowhere until you, the people, wake up, change your mind, renew it with a different, a different philosophy a different edification. And you're not going to do that as long as you listen to me. If I was Satan, I'd lead every last one of you straight to hell. And I'd save a few to share in my rewards until I needed more. Then I'd let them have babies and create a new, a new hell the process beginning over, if I was Satan. Now, ladies and gentlemen, everything that I have just told you about Satan is what Satan is doing. And we have fallen into line thinking that we were doing the right thing, thinking that we were a blessed individual, a blessed community, a blessed nation, but we're not. God sent a man here many times. One in the past 30 years he sent and offered himself to be your president to help you have your dreams come true. Not just black people, not just white people or satisfy men or women only, but to satisfy all of you in such a way that it would go beyond your individuality, beyond your community, beyond your nation. 33 years, this man has championed the American perimeters. He's offered God up. He's offered peace, prosperity, and joy to the community at large, to the church, and to individuals. And when this man ran for president of the United States, he could not even get enough money together to set up a campaign. This individual couldn't get enough money to do anything. The church turned his back on God's man. The church turned his back on God's man. The community did, but the community didn't know God. The church said they did. So when the community turned his back on God, you can understand that. An individual who says that uh, he's not that uh, connected to God, they turned his back on this man. You can understand that, but a church thousands and thousands across this land, millions and millions of those of you who go to church every week praising and shouting and falling over benches and laying on the floor, preachers who laying hands on you, telling you you got it and you believe in it and they are flying around in jets, got 
tens of thousands of people listening to them every week about God, the same God that this candidate championed across this country as much as the few dollars he could get would allow him to do. And not a single one of you supported God's plan. Not a single one of you supported God's plan. Now to this individual, I don't know how God sees it, but to this individual, you are serving Satan. Satan will not allow you in your current mind to glorify God. God is not interested in your singing. God is not interested in your laying on of hands and people falling over benches and all that. No, God is not interested in that. God is interested in you maturing, recognizing the truth and bringing peace between you and your family, your community, your state and your nation and the world. God is concerned about you creating prosperity with yourself, your family, your community, your estate, your nation, and the world. God is interested in you creating joy with yourself, your family, your community, your state, your nation, and the world. That's what God is, that's praise to God. Falling across benches, shouting because your emotions have been stirred up. That's not God. That's the devil tricking you. Tricking you, ladies and gentlemen. Tricking you. Now you have gone to these jobs and you own these businesses and you own all of these things that's going on in the world today. That's not through God's blessing. That blessing that God created for you to enjoy and experience in this life by the process of creating heaven on earth has been stolen by Satan. And everything that you do, you're doing it in the name of Satan. I don't care what you say. I don't care how much you say you're doing it in the name of God. You are doing it in the name of Satan. You see, Satan is satisfied with you as an individual being blessed. That's good. Or you as a family. That's good. Or you as a community. Or a state. Or a nation. That's good. Satan is satisfied with that. But you know what? When you reach that point, then Satan switches it all over to another part of the world. And they become what you have become while you regress all the way back down to all of that stuff you ignored before. So you end up not paying 35, 25 cents for gas a gallon. You end up paying $4, $5, and $6, and so on and so forth. Why? Because Satan didn't care about you. You being robbed as you have robbed others. But now others are reaping the rewards. And you are suffering. Why? Because Satan does not give a damn about you. And what are you going to do? You see, God don't answer your prayers no more. In order for your prayers to get answered, you got to answer them. You've got to start putting into play the rules and regulations that God has set forth. Treating others like you want to be treated. If it's good and wonderful, then that's what you will receive. That will be the fruit of your seed. But if it's damnation and you're only caring about yourself, that's what you will receive. That is the fruit of your seed. Now I'm saying these things to you because I don't, I'm 61 years old. I think the first time I ran for president of the United States was in 1984, I believe. I'm not certain. It's been a long time ago. And every year since then, I have not voted for one candidate for president because I knew they had nothing to offer you. None of them acknowledge God. All they talk about is the Constitution, the founding fathers, and you. They were blessing and praising Satan, and you didn't know it. But I came, and each time I know I got one vote, I signed my name on the ballot. But God got that support. And none of you, none of you voted for God. You are a Democrat thinking that you're led by God. You're a Republican thinking that you're led by God. How can that be so when Republicans and Democrats are so far apart? God is not divided. But yet here you are talking about you love God. Then you came out, some of you, Tea Party. Some of you are independents, but you cannot offer any plan, any proposals that would bring us all together, that would bless every last one of us, house everyone. Everyone can have jobs at one. Make the world beautiful. None of you do that. And yet there are Christian people sitting on every stump 
talking about your love of God. I want to tell you this, and I'm telling you this on camera because I might not be bold enough to tell you in your face. You are not serving God. You're serving Satan. And I know for a fact, because I've traveled this country, and I've only lifted up God's plan. When you go to church, you talk about the love of God and what God wants and what God has in heaven. That's all I've offered to you, to have on earth, to have in America. And not one of you, not one of you, I don't care how religious you are, how God-fearing you are, how you think God has blessed you, not one of you supported God's plan. If I were the devil, I think I've been a success because you don't give a damn about God. Well, why have I shared this with you? I shared this with you because it's truth. And I wanted you to get it because nobody else is going to give it to you. I have never heard anyone say to you what I have said to you today. No one has ever said it to me. All they want is to play these games. Go in and tell these Bible stories over and over and over and over and over again. Trying to find new ways of saying them to incite your emotions. Get you to put God in the plate. You go home just as dead and blind as you were when you came. But Satan's servant got more of these now than he did when he came in. And he's satisfied. And Satan's satisfied. God is wondering when you're going to change. Change today, ladies and gentlemen. Stop competing. Start cooperating. Look at a athletic team. Everybody plays a role, just as in society. Everybody plays a role. Many people play the same role. That's only to keep it supplied with power. But there are roles, different roles that people play. And they have to be good at it. But being good at that alone does not make you a winner. You must be able to put all of that greatness, all of that goodness together and make it work for a common outcome. Victory. Victory. That's a winner. And as children of God, you're going to have to start changing the way you do things. Stop competing and start cooperating. America is not competing with China. America is God's child trying to become the greatest child that America can be. Not greater than China, not greater than Russia, but as great as America can be. And what determines that? America's peace, prosperity, and joy. The presence of it within these continental borders and the magnitude of it to spread out beyond. That's what God seeks. Barack Obama cannot give you that. No Democrat can. George Bush or any candidate for the Republican Party cannot give you that. No candidate can. Only God can. And the leader and its people must be led by the Spirit of God. Must be. No ifs and ands about it. I know you've been taught God, government, God, or religion. Forget religion. I don't even know what that is. Government and God can't work together. The only government that's working under the principles of God has any life. Now, I think I can go. I think you got the message. What do I want you to do? If you got any concerns, I'm going to tell you this. If you got any concerns, contact me. Contact me. Let me know what your concerns are. If you're willing to change your life, if you're willing to be different, and to be about the business of love. Contact me, share with me what you wanna do, and let us see if we can together work it out so we can spread love from ourselves, through our family, through our community, through our state, through our nation, and throughout the world. Spread love, love, love. You know what love is. Every time you see it, 
every time you come in contact with it, you walk away saying, wow. Contact me at my email address. My email address is eddymarcus at q.com. That's E-D-D-I-E-M-A-R-C-U-S at Q, as in Quincy, Q, like P Q Q dot com. And let us begin to work together to glorify God and to put this paper in the trash. Bye bye.